This, to me, is the biggest reason why I wouldn't go to DaVinci Resolve 20. G'day, welcome back. So I've just finished up on some color grading jobs and a photography job. And when I was doing this, I noticed that Resolve 20 had come out. Now, if you hadn't noticed Resolve 20 come out, you can just go to YouTube and you can see the multiple and multiples of videos that people are making about Resolve 20. Now this makes sense. Resolve 20 is out, you upgrade to the new one, you get a lot of views and it's good content and it's easy to make. Now for me as a working colorist, this is not something I'm actually going to do straight away. And today I just wanna to go through a few reasons as to why I'm not gonna to go to Resolve 20 straight away. And if you have any other ideas why you wouldn't go or maybe some problems that you're having with Resolve 20, make sure to comment below. Now, my first reason is quite simple. Resolve 20 is still in beta form, so it is known to crash. Now, at the moment, I'm working on a project which is ongoing that'll probably last until maybe the end of this year. Now, there's nothing worse as a colorist when you have a client sitting down and you're in a color grading session and Resolve 20 crashes. For me, this is unacceptable. I can't work in an environment when my program, my software, sorry, keeps crashing. As a colorist, you want things to move smoothly throughout the session. So if Resolve is crashing, not only is it a waste of your time to keep opening and um, even reinstalling the software, but it also makes it look unprofessional. Obviously, image is everything when it comes to your business. And as a small business, especially for me, then that's all that really matters, that you want to have a, well, first of all, you wanna make great results, but also you want to show the client that you are professional. So if your software keeps crashing, this is something that is a bad light when it comes to you. So for me, Resolve 19 works perfectly. I don't have any issues. So I will be sticking Resolve 19 until 20 comes out of beta. Now, another one that I've heard of that I'm not 100% sure on, is the fact that it's not working with power bins over multiple projects. Now, this is a little bit kind of weird for me, but people are saying that the power bins they have in one project aren't going across to the next project. Now, this is something I don't use power bins a lot, but there are some that I actually do use that I would use in different projects. So for me, if I'm having to make a new, let's say, um, highlight softener, every time I make a new project, that is again, something that's gonna slow me down. And again, as a colorist, it's about working smoothly and quickly. So you don't wanna to have to keep making up the same thing every time you start a new project. I'm not sure about this one, but that's what the rumors I've heard in my Discord. So that's something I might have to look into a bit later on. So this is an interesting one. And the fact is, as a colorist, nothing really interests me too much in terms of new feature. Now they had that new feature, which have Sorry, forgotten what it's called, but it's basically like hue and saturation type of thing. And the things I've seen on YouTube, it doesn't really interest me all that much. It's basically I have DCTLs that do the same thing. Now I'm not saying it's bad. It's always good to have a new feature and it's always good to see what that new feature can do. But in terms of me as a colorist, it's not something I'm ever gonna use on a project or especially not something I would use on a working project. So I'm not jumping into Resolve 20 to just use a, well, a tool that I'm never gonna use. Now, I know people out there have actually used this tool. So if you have, can you let me know if it's any good? I'm actually really curious to see what people think of it, if it's any good and if it's worth upgrading to. Again, I'm not gonna upgrade to, um, not at the moment, but in the future, maybe that is something I would look into. But at the moment, yeah, again, like in terms of color grading, that's not interesting me. Now, I know there's a lot of, other things in terms of editing and um, the cut page and um, what's the other one called? Fairlight that have lots of new features, which I would have to get into. The editing one, yeah, that interests me a fair bit. Cut page, not so much. I never use the cut page. I, I don't know how to use the cut page properly. I think it's uh, a bit of dark arts when it comes to the, using the cut page. But in color grading, yeah, there's some new things, maybe the new tools, maybe enhancements, um, I think the film one, whatever it's called, got enhanced and a couple other things, but the new big feature doesn't really interest me that much. But again, maybe when I get into Resolve 20, when it's out of beta, I'd look into it. So let me know if that's any good. Now I have a very fast graphics card because obviously you need to as a working colorist, but I've also heard reports that it's not working properly with graphics cards and it's actually slower in Resolve 20 than it is 19. Now, again, I'm not 100% sure on this. 
So if people know more about this information, let me know. I'd actually be very interested again. But I've heard people saying it's not running as smoothly as it was in Resolve 19. Now again, this comes back to performance and it also comes back to speed when in terms of grading. Again, if you're working as a colorist and you have a client sitting down and your system is chugging along really slowly and it wasn't the last time you used it in Resolve 19, this is a big problem. You don't wanna to have to be working on a project and things are slowing down and you have to wait for it to load up to render, et cetera, et cetera. You want things to run smoothly. You don't wanna to have to be like, let me just export this clip out for you and then we can watch it and then go back and resolve and make those changes. No, you wanna be have smooth playback, client watches it, everyone's happy, you make the changes, again, smooth playback. You don't wanna to have to keep doing um, exports or anything like that to try and speed up the process. So again, graphics card resolve, not working as well as they should be. That's a bit of a red flag for me, and I'm sure Resolve will fix it up. And all these things, Blackmagic will fix it up because they're actually an amazing company and they make obviously a fantastic product that I use every day that I use for work. So again, these are things that I hopefully, well, hopefully, these are things that Resolve will fix, will Blackmagic will fix. But graphics card, that is a bit of a big one for me. Now, the last one is the biggest one for me. Now, the one that I heard the most when it comes to Discord and other colorist conversations is that it's not working properly with the CTLs. This, to me, is the biggest reason why I wouldn't go to DaVinci Resolve 20 because in my color grading job, I rely on DCTLs a lot when it comes to my work because it helps me to speed up my work. So a lot of people saying that the DCTLs aren't working, that they're not showing up, that they're behaving the way they shouldn't be behaving, and all in all, a lot of people that I know working colors are actually going back to 19 until this problem is solved. Because with DCTLs, they do so much for me, when it, again, when it comes to speed of work. And it also comes down to the fact that I have DCTLs built in to my node tree. So if these DCTLs aren't working and I go open a project, then I'm already fixing up my node tree when it comes to every project I'm working on. So that means I have to remake my no tree. I have to replace it with other things that aren't working as well. And this is a problem because I want my no tree to be running again perfectly like it was in DaVinci Resolve 19. I really <laughs> messed that up. These CTLs not working properly is a big deal for me. And I mean, there's many reasons. One, again, speed and efficiency, but also you pay for these DCTLs. You want them to work properly. Now, I don't know if it's on the manufacturers of these DTLs or the creators to make them work on Resolve 20 or it's up to Blackmagic. Now, I'm pretty sure it's more on Blackmagic's end of the deal than it is on the creators of these DCTLs, but can't be 100% sure. But I know the people who make these DCTLs and they're saying it's not really up to them, it's up to Blackmagic. So again, I'm sure this is something Blackmagic will fix in the future, but for now, definitely something I would not be upgrading to if this is one of the big problems which I've heard it is. So these are just some of my reasons as to why I won't be jumping into Resolve 20 just now. So if you have some problems or you're having some issues or anything like that, make sure to drop a comment in below and let me know anything that's going on in terms of Resolve 20. Or am I wrong? Is there good things about Resolve 20 that I've missed? Have you used the new tool? Is it amazing? Is there anything else that people aren't talking about that you want me to talk about when it comes to Resolve 20? Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great weekend. Hopefully I'll be making more videos soon. I have a really amazing one coming up that is going to blow your mind in terms of speed when it comes to your color grading. So thanks again for watching. I've been Drew from Haiti Films. Have a great day.